Good morning. So good to see you. And um, so we're just going to be talking about growing this morning. Okay. So you may have heard of the acronym GROW. Okay. It's, sort of, it's a sort of acronym you hear if you go to the gym and it's for self-improvement. Sort of acronym you hear if you've been in business or education and it's a kind of way of people thinking about how they can get better. So GROW is like, what's your goal? What's your goal? What do you want to do? What's your reality? You know, what are the things that are, how is it right now? What, what are the obstacles that are in the way? And then what are you going to do about it? Grow. But the problem is with that as, a, as an acronym, is it's all about us. What do, what's our goal? What's our reality? What, is our, what are the obstacles that we see and what are we going to do about it? And I want to propose a different grow today. I want to propose this, God's revelation, our willing. If God shows us something, are we willing to do it? If God asks us to do something, are we willing to take that step forward? Someone who knew about this was Hannah. So Hannah, we read in in, in the book of Samuel, chapter 1, that she didn't have a child. And it it was a point of great pain for her because she wanted a child so much. And so she prayed and she promised God that if you give me a child, I'm gonna give him to you, I'm gonna loan him to you, and and you can have him for all the days of his life. I'm gonna devote him to you. And then one day as she she was praying, God shows that she's gonna have a son. And she calls him Samuel, Samuel, meaning because I asked for him from the Lord. And sometimes when we pray for stuff, we can kind of pray and it's almost like a request, you know, we're just asking God stuff. But sometimes as we pray and the prayer becomes not just a a request, but we start to speak prophetically. We start to speak into being all that God wants to do. And somehow as we get that kind of, God starts to show us things as we pray, we start to see it be in action, the very thing that God is calling. And it's the Holy Spirit working through prayer and and allowing us to speak into the atmosphere in faith what he wants to do. So we're going to start the story in 1 Samuel 2, 18 to 21. Verse 18. But Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod like a little tunic. Verse 19, each year his mother made him a little robe and took it to him, and she went up with her husband to offer the annual sacrifice. Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife, saying, may the Lord give you children by this woman to take the place of the one she prayed for and gave to the Lord. And then they would go home. And the Lord was gracious to Hannah, and she gave him birth to three sons and two daughters, Meanwhile, Samuel grew in the presence of the Lord. Lord, as we, as we just look at these scriptures now, I just pray that you would just begin to speak into our hearts, Lord, all that you want to say today. In Jesus' name, amen. So each year, Hannah would go to see her, her little boy, and she would take this little jacket that she'd spent some time making and knitting, And the question is, how did she know how big Samuel was going to be? How did she know? Like, did she have a download from God? How did she know? Ruth, can I just borrow for a sec? Okay. See, see what happened was, for Samuel, he had to wear a bigger jacket. And the thing about a bigger jacket is, you know, it it feels a bit uncomfortable. It, It can feel, you can feel a bit conspicuous. You know, because the sleeves are a little bit too long, it's a little bit baggy. I remember when I was uh, at going to secondary school, and every, every August we'd go down to the shop and we would buy our new green blazer. I, and it was awful because you'd get the blazer and, you know, the sleeves were too long and you kind of didn't fit properly and it was kind of a bit embarrassing and you'd feel like a bit conspicuous. But what my mum knew was this. I was going to grow. And as I used to grow, you know, but as the year went on, 
it kind of began to fit. And it, and it used to fit really nicely. And there was a point in the year where, you know, you just sort of felt kind of comfortable in the jacket and it kind of felt good. But the problem is, by about July, the jacket was like tight, you know, and it was constrictive and it used to kind of gather and, and if I kind of moved too quickly or something, it would start to split. And she just knew that the following August I'd need a bigger jacket. And I think that's what God wants us to do today. He wants us to recognize that he wants us to grow. Thanks so much. If I can have the jacket, that's great. And there's always a sense of, of weight in that. You know, it didn't happen straight away. There was, it kind of, you had to wait for it. But over time, you start to grow into that bigger jacket. And for, for Samuel, it was almost like a, uh, like a picture or a metaphor of what God was doing in his life. As you start to see that bigger thing that God was doing. And sometimes when we, we wear a bigger jacket, it's difficult but it's something we've got to do. We need to grow. And Samuel grew in three ways. He grew in maturity. He grew in service. And he grew in obedience. So let's think about maturity, first of all. When he took on that bigger jacket, sometimes it means letting go. He would get, every year, that that new jacket, and he would treasure that little ephod. He would treasure that little jacket. His mum had made it. It was precious to him. He would have treasured and looked after it, maybe even embellished it and tried to make it even better. He nurtured it and he looked, he didn't want to get any kind of damage to it. But there was a point where he had to let go of last year's jacket. It, it was too small for him. And sometimes we need to do that. We're doing a, a cap alpha at the moment and I would have loved to have been right, leading the cap alpha, leading every session, being in every, every discussion group. But that wasn't the right thing to do. It's right to build up a team and the team lead the alpha. And I'm often in the background just doing the washing up. But the great thing is on a Sunday afternoon or a Monday morning, I'll get a text from someone on the team and they'll say, do you know, so-and-so came and sat with me at church today. So-and-so went for a coffee with me today. And it's the team that are working with these amazing people as they grow in their faith. And sometimes we've just got to let go of what is a good thing and allow God to do the better thing. And sometimes we need to let go of, of things which aren't so good. You know, attitudes, things from the past, things that we know God doesn't desire us to hold. You know, when I was younger, people will often say, Ben, you're just so cynical. You know, it was the thing, it also almost became the thing that I was known for, being cynical. I don't want to be known for being cynical. I want to be known for someone who's full of faith. I want to be known for someone that, even if we can't see it now, that we can see in the future that God is going to do it. And for some of us, it might be unforgiveness that we need to, we need to let go of that, that thing. We may be being picky or gossipy or angry or jealous. But God doesn't want us to be known for that. He wants us to be known as people that are full of faith. He wants us to be known as people that love him, that reflect him well. And whatever age or stage we're at in life, the Holy Spirit is always, always wanting to work in our life to bring love and joy and peace and patience, kindness, self-control, goodness, faithfulness. Holy Spirit is always working. How can we grow in that maturity? How can we grow in that way? Secondly, he he grew in service. If we look at uh, 1 Samuel 3, 1 to 4, we move on a couple of chapters. It says, The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. But in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. And one night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. And the lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark was. See, these were not good times in Israel. There wasn't many visions. God wasn't speaking. 
The service in the house of the Lord was not wholehearted. The idea was, was that the light should stay on all night and that the priest should be there topping up the light with oil until the morning. But Eli, he, he, he was complacent. He wasn't serving God wholeheartedly. But it says that, that Samuel, little Samuel, he, he was wholehearted in what he was doing. He was ministering for the Lord. What was he doing? He, he was laying out perhaps things in the temple, but he was doing it with all his heart. He was perhaps learning some of the kind of scriptures with all his heart. He was doing everything with all his heart. And that's what God is calling us to do, to grow in service. I don't believe anyone retires in the kingdom of God. He's always got a role for us. He's always got a purpose for us. You know, there's a, there's, a, there's a passage which we've shared many times over the last 18 months, two years. Andrew touched on it this morning. From Isaiah 54, 2. And it says, enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. It's a picture of a... If you look at verse, the verse before, it's a picture of, a, again, a lady who has got no children. But God is saying, don't look at where you are right now. Don't look at what you can't see. But look at what I am going to do. Because you're going to have descendants. You're going to have children. And as I was reading this verse uh, last year, it was one of the verses that absolutely convinced me that, that we were going to grow as a church. And it was one of the verses that absolutely convinced me that we were going to take on Tiverton as well, which is our, our, one of our other campuses. But the question was for me was, how are we going to do this? We're not so big. We haven't got so many people. How are we going to do this? And as I, as I was reading this and praying, I just felt God show me, sort of zooming in to sort of a piece of the, the tent cord. And instead of those little fibers in there, it was people. And those people were all kind of moving together and almost kind of sinking together and moving and, and kind of stretching and pushing forward and pulling back and moving as the tent peg was being pulled further out. And I had this word elastic structures and I believe that as a church we need to see what our elastic structures are. How can we continue to serve God and how can we find ways to grow as a church? And it comes from ordinary people serving, stepping forward and saying, look, I'm going to do that. I can't necessarily see how exactly how it's going to happen at the moment, but I'm prepared to put my hand up and say, yes, Lord, I'm going to do it. Carissa can borrow your set. Do you know, every time we have a new person in the church, we want to give them a really good welcome. And Carissa has been doing a great job on the welcome team. But, you know, we just... But, you know, she's going to, she's going to wear a bigger jacket. As a welcome pastor, she's just going to be welcoming people and making sure that new people come into the church and get a really, really good welcome. Make sure they can get connected into connect groups. Making sure that every single person that comes in is seen, noticed, and can find their home at, Co at One Life Church. She's wearing a bigger jacket. I mean, just thank you, Carissa, for, for taking that step of, of wearing that bigger jacket. It's, it's amazing. Well done. Thank you. And, you know, it would, be, it would be easy, wouldn't it, to think, well, you know, I'm just one strand. What can I do? But, you know, one strand sees the next strand and it goes, well, I'm only another strand and I'm not, so, I'm not sure what I can do, but I'm just going to go with that strand there. And then the next one says, well, what do I know about anything? But I'm just going to wind around that, those two strands and we're going to join together. I'm not sure what we can do together, but I'm sure we can do something. And then another strand comes along and says, well, you know, that's not so strong, but I'm just going to stand with that one and we're going to kind of wind together. And before you know it, you've got a whole piece of rope which we can slowly lean back and it holds our weight if every single person is stepping forward and doing that. Elastic structures. Can we be part of elastic structures? 
Can we be part of, of what God wants to do as he grows the church? The third thing is Samuel grew in obedience. It says in 1 Samuel 3, 4 and 5 and 8 to 11, it says this. Then the Lord called Samuel and Samuel answered, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back, lie down. So he went and lay down. Verse 8, a third time the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized the, boy, the Lord wasn't calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down, and if he says to you, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came. It's an amazing verse. It's the Lord came and stood there. The Lord today is standing right here in this room. The Lord, the Lord came and stood there, calling as the other, ta- other times, Samuel. Samuel. Then Samuel said this amazing verse, speak. Your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, see him about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it single. You know, there was no revelation at that time. God wasn't speaking to the people very much. And Eli wasn't a great priest and he, he, he was not serving the Lord wholeheartedly. But he did know one thing, that he knew when God was speaking. And for Samuel, he had to discern when God was speaking. He had to discern the voice of the Lord. And it says that eventually that Samuel grew up and he let none of the Samuel's words fall to the ground. The Samuel's words came to Israel. And our job as Christians is, and as people is to discern what is God saying to me today? He goes from having to work out that God is speaking and then God not only is speaking to him, but he gives him something to do, something to say, something to bring. I remember when last year, you know, we, we were deciding what to do about Tiverton and I remember having a quiet time in the morning. I was praying and I just had a picture of, of the church there and it was like cafe style and people were coming in having free food and and. It was amazing. And I also remember Mark, uh, in this picture, Mark was speaking and sharing his testimony. And in October this year, we we did a kind of cafe-style church. 30 people came in, 30 adults and 30 children. It's the first time 30 children had been in in the building for ages. We literally did what we felt God showing us to do. A few weeks ago, Mark shared his testimony in Tiverton. God spoke into being what he wanted to do. We were just obedient. And it's so important that we just step out in faith. What is God saying today? What is God challenging you to do today? What is God speaking into your heart today? It's easy to look at what we don't have. It's easy to say, well, we haven't got this and we haven't got that. And we now God is saying, Don't look at that. Look at what I'm going to do. In November 1949, there was two old women in the island of Lewis. One was 84 and one was 82. One was blind, but they were appalled at the lack of youth in the church. So they started to pray. And a verse gripped their hearts and they began to pray into it every night on their knees from 10 o'clock at night till 3 o'clock in the morning. And it was Isaiah 44, 3. For I will pour out water on the thirsty land and the streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. A few weeks later, having been praying for, for, for six weeks or so, there was a prayer meeting in a barn. And a, and a man stood up and he, and he said, I want to read this verse out. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol and not sworn deceitfully. 
And he says, look, this is a bit twee, this, but how can I just pray this unless I've got clean hands and a pure heart? And at that moment, he fell into a trance. And then there was an amazing move of God across the whole parish. It was so powerful that when Duncan Campbell, the minister from the mainland, came on the island, he could feel the presence of God. Before he'd even got to the, the, the evening meeting he was going to do at nine o'clock, there was already queues of people outside the local police station. It was said that 75% of people found Jesus before they'd even been preached at, before even anyone had spoken to them. They met God in the fields, in the schools, in the offices, in the factories, in their homes. They realized that Jesus was knocking at the door of their heart. They realized that Jesus tells us that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. They realized that there's a savior and that savior is Jesus. And they realized they could have a fresh start, a clean slate. And for some of them that, that, that night, they just gave their hearts to him and they had a fresh start. And like Samuel, these two ladies, they, they didn't, they just grew. They were willing to take on board what God had said to them. And they just stepped up. They put on a bigger jacket. A bigger jacket was a jacket of prayer. And as they stepped up and took on that bigger jacket of prayer, God gave them a picture of the future. And that picture of the future was the, the hall, the church being packed with people, young people. Because that's what God wanted to do. Their job was just to put on the bigger jacket to pray. They grew in maturity. They were old ladies, but they still had some growing to do. They grew in service as they were on their knees praying. And they grew in obedience, being willing to say, yeah, Lord, I'm going to do that. I'm going to step up. When he, when he reflected back on, on this and, and thought about it, he, they want, he wanted to think about why, why there had been so many people had been sent out from, from that region of Scotland. Why so many missionaries, so many church leaders. And he, said, and he, he thought back and it came down to that, that time when so many people, so many young people met Jesus. It was the steadfastness of those young people that God had reached during that revival that had then spread around the world to become missionaries and church leaders. And I just believe we need to pray for our young people, pray for our youth. I believe we need to, to pray that God will pour out water on a thirsty land. You know, a thirsty land which is broken by Drugs and addiction, debt, all kinds of things that hold people back. You know, sometimes in our minds, you know, we're just so caught up in our minds of, of all this stuff like lies that God just doesn't want us to believe anymore. You know, we're made in God's image. We're his people. And I just want to challenge us today. Are we, are we ready to wear a bigger jacket? What's God saying to you today? Is God saying to you, look, I want, to, I want you to step up. I want you to take on a bigger jacket. When the king of kings says to an ordinary man or woman, look, I, I want to not only know you, but I want you to, to come on a journey with me. It's the greatest, most exciting journey that anyone can ever go on.